Yes, you can grow indoors with soil, avoid the pests, and actually get some maximized results, such as this beautiful bucket of lettuce I have. When we think of indoor gardening, we typically think of hydro. And this may be because anything other than hydro may seem messy, pest-filled, and overall daunting. Unless, of course, you're Nate and you're stubborn and you refuse to do hydro and only soil. The truth is that you can garden indoors with soil and see some really great results. I myself do use both methods and there's a reason for it. It's because sometimes soil just works better than hydro. In this video, I'm going to go through all the steps that you need to take to ensure you have a pest free but also high yielding indoor garden using potting soil. Let's jump into it. So the first thing we need to look at is the container. Now I want to go into more depth when it comes to choosing a container size in a separate video along with the different options that there are. One thing I do want you to think about in the meantime before that video comes out next week is do you want a porous container that's going to allow for water to run out through the bottom via gravity or or do you prefer a self-watering container? If you want to lean towards self-watering, then you're going to have to consider getting a plastic or a metal. Typically a stainless steel or something that does not rust is going to be needed. On the other side, if you are willing to use a catchment and simply have holes or a porous container such as terracotta or even cardboard, then again, you have to think about what kind of catchment is going to go underneath that. But again, when it comes to the size of the container, this will be a separate video because there's a ton of info there to cover and it's really going to depend on your environment and how much babysitting you're willing to do when it comes to your plants. So the next thing we're obviously looking for is potting soil. And while there are a ton of choices out there, I want you to keep this actually relatively simple. What we're looking for is something that has a slow release fertilizer in it. The way to know this is there will be the three numbers stated on the front of the package, or it will say feeds up to and give you a time frame in which that soil feeds. If you choose to go with a soil that doesn't have a slow release fertilizer in it, then you will wanna watch the part of this video where we go over fertilizer. Now, if you're reusing soil, again, you're going to have to fertilize or supplement with fertilizer. So with that being said, what you want to choose is a potting soil that has been stored indoors or was stored in a dehydrated block. This is important because anything that's been stored outdoors will have fungus nets and other larvae and eggs in it. This just happens naturally because they generally will put holes in the bag because as that soil does decompose, because it's organic, it will release gases. If they didn't place the tiny little pinholes, the bag would blow up eventually. This also goes for anything that you're bringing from outdoors inside you're gonna bring some pests with it. If you're choosing to reuse soil or your only option is to get bag soil that has been stored outdoors, I heavily encourage you to check out my videos, blog posts, or whatever it is on nematodes or predatory mites and or BT, so Bacillus thuringiensis. There are a number of different products out there that has this bacteria in it or has the predatory nematodes. They'll actually go through your soil and eat all the pests located in it. Whenever possible, dehydrated and stored inside. I think one of the most difficult things when it comes to growing indoors is combating the excess moisture and not necessarily the moisture ambiently, but the moisture inside of the container. If we don't have heavy duty fans running, and in my case, I just use a desk fan, or if we don't have appropriate lighting or temperatures, we tend to see the soil moisture stay pretty high for the duration of that plant's life. Now, this can cause anaerobic conditions, and one of the most famous bacteria that survive and thrive in this environment is root rot, and we wanna to try to avoid this. So the best way to avoid this without necessarily putting a ton of time and energy into it is just simply adding extra perlite or pumice. I generally, per bale or per large bag of potting soil, will add half to an entire bag of perlite. Now, this is going to do a few things, but namely, it's going to act as pore space, and that pore space is going to allow for air to have room inside of the potting soil where aerobic bacteria and microbes can thrive and survive, avoiding the headache of root rot and unfortunately, anaerobic condition. Now, if you watch my video on self-watering containers, and that's what I do for my indoor grow setup, then you probably watch the type of soil that I use and one of the things I really truly did stress was not just the pumice and the perlite, but the size of the pumice and perlite in that mixture. And that is because we have a system that is continually saturated for the duration of that plant's growing period. So it's very important in a self-watering container case. So 
keep that in mind. So I think hands down, anyone would argue that growing in potting soil makes growing organically much easier than hydro. In a hydro system, we can't truly grow organic and we've got over what it means to be truly organic. And unfortunately, hydro doesn't fit the bill unless of course we're doing aquaponics, which would be the raft system video that I just did recently. Now, if you don't have a fish tank and you're not doing aquaponics and you still wanna grow organically, then potting soil is a great alternative. However, if you're choosing to use organic fertilizer in the form of compost, manure, or otherwise, there are some things you wanna consider. First off, adding too much compost or manure may result in mold. Now, while mold is not a bad thing because it is a signal for a biologically active soil, it can cause harm if you have allergies or sensitivities to mold. Remember, this is indoors, so you wanna keep that in mind. Adding too much compost can also cause not just the mold, but potential excess growth. Yes, it's true, organic cannot necessarily burn your plants, but what it can do is volatilize, gas off into the air, or leach, run out with the water. Anything left suspended in that soil system can be used by plants, and if there's excess nitrogen in particular, we end up with soft green tissue growth. Now you're probably thinking, actually, that's not a bad thing, and you wouldn't be wrong. However, that soft green tissue is very susceptible to disease and bugs. It's delicious to us, and it's equally as delicious to them, and easier to penetrate. So in an indoor system where we have a very close environment, we have to really ensure that we don't allow for soft green leggy growth due to excess nutrients in that soil. So commonly people will say 50-50 mix. I would actually cut that back to 25% of the potting soil. If you are not biased to either conventional or synthetic, that I actually want you to use a liquid form of fertilizer. If this is granular dissolved in water, I want you to dissolve the granular two hours prior to fertilizing your plant. This will allow that granular fertilizer to actually mix and water solubilize properly. The reason why we're using liquid is because water is how plants uptake nutrients. We all already have that nutrient in a bioavailable form of water. It will be easily uptaken by our plants. This goes for both synthetic and organic. I'll leave a link down below for some liquid options you can try for indoor gardening that I'm personally using this year. The next question is an obvious one, and that is what can you exactly grow in an indoor soil system? And the answer to this is the world is your oyster. You can go with herbs and lettuce, but you can also go for fruiting and flowering plants such as peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, you name it. Now, I like to encourage people to go for dwarf varieties of these, unless of course it's peppers and then you could go with any variety truly. And I'll leave a link down below for what seeds would work in this case, but what I will say is if you go for something that fruits and flowers, you want to take into consideration that you will need to do some of your own self-pollinating. So you're going to have to use a combination of potential paintbrushes and Q-tips or simply giving the plants a little bit of a shake. I'll do a video on this closer to when my plants begin to fully flower so I can show you what self-pollination looks like in an indoor system. And last thing and special things to note when growing indoors regardless is lighting and then also wind movement. So I like to place a fan and if you're starting to see some nutrient deficiencies such as yellowing tips on the leaves or really lime green leaves this is a sign of lack of air movement and I'm going to do a separate video on why that is and the science behind that but what I can say is add a fan it doesn't have to be a big fan it just has to be able to move some air I'm using a desktop fan it's very simple the second thing to think about is lighting now I did do a video on windowsill growing and this is a great option for various different plants that you may want to grow in a soil system on a window ledge. My neighbor actually cool enough is trying this with some food scraps and it's working pretty well, but I have some adjustments for her and I have some free seed links for her that I need to drop off. Beth, do not let me forget. What I will say though, is you also want to make sure that you add some lighting. This should be on a timer and I'm going to get into the specifics of lighting because you guys have requested so many times for a crash course for dummies and lighting, but that's about it. I hope this video helps you guys out and is going to encourage you to start your own indoor growing set up. Feeding your family with cheap organic produce that is locally sourced. It's carbon tax free. It's uh, California decides to not ship lettuce free. It's E. coli free. You name it. There's just so many benefits to growing your own stuff.